Hey y'all, I'm Elisa and I am the Scrappy Wife behind ScrappyWife.com and today I have an art journal process video for you. I am working in my Dina Wakely Blue Media Journal and today I'm kind of working with some odds and ends that I found in my craft room when I was cleaning out things this past weekend and I have all of these beautiful butterflies and I got a large package of these years ago at Paper Source, have loved them, have used them in different projects, but am now ready to kind of use them up, I think, to be done with them just a bit. So I'm planning on using those. This is my first experience in this journal with the burlap page. So I will be kind of experimenting and seeing what works and what doesn't work on that page. I have some Jane Davenport inks or Jane Davenport acrylics pulled. I'm planning on doing a more muted color palette in the background to really feature the butterflies. But other than that, I will put you all on fast forward. Any other supplies I end up using, I will definitely link down below. Let's go. Okay, I put this part in super fast forward. What I am doing is taking a new doodle stencil from Tim Holtz and I'm using white gesso to add just a little bit of interest to some of these butterflies. Sometimes I add it on all four tips of the wings. Sometimes you can see just on the bottom half, just sometimes just on one wing, trying to change it up, but giving them a more cohesive look and knocking down the color just a little bit with some white to kind of brighten them up. They are a beautiful paper for sure, but the colors are all really rich. And I'm glad I did when I end up putting together this page. This is one of those, I don't know if you all ever have these, but it's like a kitchen sink page is what I call it. I just throw all of the things on this page and I don't know what it was about my mood on this particular day, but I wanted to use all of the things and I sure did. And I had um, a great time working in my craft room this past weekend, like cleaning out a lot of stuff, which is when I rediscovered these butterflies. And sometimes I think that that is a good idea to clean out and make a use this first pile. And that's kind of what these butterflies were. Now I have this old paper. This is from uh, a book that one of my friends got in like a thrift shop or, you know, one of those like 25 cent books that um, we weren't going to read. And so she divided up the pages for us to use as art journal pages. And I am just going to use some gesso and then some Mod Podge later when I'm running low to cover the left side of the spread on this watercolor paper. I didn't want it to be that bright white and bringing in this kind of cream colored paper really tied this page to the page on the right with the burlap really made it go together. I'm not worried about the words that are on the paper. It's just for texture and interest in the background. Um, the words don't really uh, have anything to do with the spread and so I'm just layering them in all different directions sometimes they're upside down sometimes they're sideways and really just looking for that layered collage feel now I normally don't use Mod Podge in my art journal but of course these are unusual times and I can't just run out to an art store and I started actually not with gesso but with Liquitex matte gel medium but I am running super low and I immediately saw that this was going to be a big project because the paper was really soaking in that matte gel medium. So I grabbed for my Mod Podge. I made sure not to use the glossy one, but the matte one, because when I use glossy, it does tend to end up a little bit sticky. And so that doesn't work well in my art journal because then the pages start to stick together. And you can see as I brought that in, I'm kind of scraping the bottom of this barrel as well. So I will probably have to put together in order for some matte gel medium and some more Mod Podge, but using what I have on hand right now, just covering up the last few little spots and making sure it has a nice strong coverage. And then I will put it aside, let it dry because there are lots of layers of Mod Podge and I'll come back to it to add paint. Now I have laid out my acrylic paint colors. These are all Jane Davenport and I went with a more muted palette except for that bright pink and orange, which I'll use a little bit more sparingly. And this was an interesting experiment because of, of course the burlap takes the paint differently. And I am trying to marry these two pages together. And I'm not, I'm not sure if that's what you're supposed to do in this art journal, if you're supposed to treat them as separate layouts, but it's what I'm trying for this particular entry. I'm not sure that I'll continue this trend. I might do 
kind of like separate layouts like on the left side have one on the right side have another because when you are working with this different material it is a challenge I'm not gonna lie it is a challenge I am sometimes missing my old Jane Davenport art journal but I'm determined to work my way through this one so on the left side here I am adding some water to this acrylic because I want these colors to kind of blend a little bit I didn't use watercolor because I did not think that that would do well on the burlap but I wanted to water down the acrylic so they would start to blend I add a few little texture dots over there in the corner but you can see I'm just kind of bringing in just a hint of the colors and it's a very loose background most of this ends up getting covered up with my butterflies later on and that's okay it's fun to just kind of work with the background now this is some pops of some bright colors and at first I started putting it on and I did not like it and for some reason in my head I didn't like it so I thought I'll just put some more and I did and in the end I do I do like these bright colors it does help on this more muted page just to add something else I think if it's all muted all the time it just feels a little bit drab to me and I wanted to change it up I'm mixing in some of this orange with the pink layering them together which I also really end up liking and like I said in the end when I pull out those butterflies they are going to be spread across the page and a lot of this gets covered up but it does lay a nice foundation for what I'm planning to do okay once I add the last last few little bits of paint I'm gonna pull out my heat tool and kind of let this dry it doesn't take very long because it's acrylic paint so it dries pretty fast now I'm coming back in with a paint pen and this is the new Posca paint pens or new to me I guess um, that I got for my birthday and it wrote beautifully I kind of wish I had a finer tip and those were not in stock on Amazon so I'll have to kind of wait for those to come back in stock but what I'm doing is adding a quote from Maya Angelou and the quote is about the changes that a butterfly has to go through like we always like admiring the beauty of the butterfly but really the beauty is in the transformation um, which was the point I was focusing on for this particular art journal page and what happens is that the quote ends up getting covered up and I knew from where I originally placed the quote, I knew it was going to be covered up because I knew my plan for the page. And I went back and forth on whether I should type out the quote and write it again in another spot. But I liked the idea that I knew the quote was here and that um, you all who are watching the process video know that the quote is there, but that it doesn't necessarily need to be seen. So again, it's kind of about building the layers and this is just one of those layers. A few of the words will end up peeking out and you can see I have a little mistake with beauty there, but that's okay. Um, that happens just sometimes when we're writing. Um, so we delight in the beauty of the butterfly, but rarely admit the changes it has um, to, the changes it has to go through to achieve its beauty. So now I'm coming in to knock back a little bit of the color and to brighten up some of the page. And so I'm mixing in white gesso with a kind of translucent white uh, acrylic paint because I didn't want the gesso, I didn't want it to be solid. I wanted it to be a little bit translucent, but I just wanted a little bit more texture in the background. So I have my brick stencil and I come through and add this texture just in a few spots across the page again wanting to brighten up that cream I'm not used to working with that cream background I really my other art journal had all white pages and so the color changes are one of the challenges in this particular book and I knew that once I added the butterflies back on to the page that they would bring in a lot of color and it was like a muted earthy tone color palette and so I again wanted to bring in white just the same as I had put the white on the butterfly wing so the same concept and you can see this is where the words are starting to get covered up some of them get covered up completely some of them you can see the uh, paint pen kind of peeking through I'm being real messy here on the burlap I didn't want it to seep through and I ended up having a little bit of seepage through that burlap and I think it'll be an interesting kind of palette that I can start the next page on and I ended up going with just the acrylic paint right here just to add let it be a little bit more translucent than I had in the corner. So there I have all of this different texture added to the page, covering up a little bit of Maya Angelou's name. And then I will 
bring back in the butterflies. Oops, I forgot. Okay, before the butterflies come, I am going to add a few splatters because for me, would it be an art journal page without the splatters? So I am splattering in a little bit of the color. You can't see it very much on the camera, but it does make a little impact here and there. Just breaking up some of that white, adding in yet another layer because I'm all about the layers. So the splattering just for fun across the page. And then once that is dry, I will bring back in those gorgeous butterflies. Now I ran the butterflies through my sewing machine to kind of connect them in a long chain. So long, in fact, it gets a little bit <laughs> tangled and I am placing them across the page and it ends up being really busy and I'm not still not totally sure that I love it. I love those butterflies. It may have been too many of them. I'm not sure. I just used some Elmer's glue um, to get them down onto the page. You'll see. And I'm, I just like the idea that they're flying off into the corner that they themselves have transformed. And I had one extra one that I will put right down here. And again, it covers up a lot of the quote. You can see some of the words peeking through. And I've picked out some collage paper. And this is from Tim Holtz. I love, love, love this collage paper. And I wanted to use it to kind of set apart some of the butterflies. So it brings in a little bit. It's like a thin tissue paper. So again, a little bit lighter, a little bit of white. It just brings it in and kind of sets the butterflies apart from each other, if that makes sense. Another texture on the page. This page has so much, so much texture, and I'm a little bit concerned about this art journal because something about it has me bringing in lots of layers and lots of bulk already. And so I'm only on my third entry and there's already some serious bulk going on on this art journal. So I'm gonna have to like focus on some flat layouts coming up. Here I am super fast putting all that tissue paper down again, just using Elmer's glue. It seemed like the best solution and I'm running low on all the things, all the adhesives. I have these old chipboard letters. Now I've had these in my collection for, I, I'm gonna say maybe 10 years. Like this is a long time that these have been here. And so trying to use up the last few of them because I had always loved them. I thought maybe I'll put it across the bottom, but then I ended up changing my mind decide to place the word transform on top of the butterflies as they are flying up across the page. And then we'll just add a little bit of adhesive and call it a day on this art journal process. I told you this definitely ended up being a kitchen sink kind of process. There is a lot going on on this page, but it's fun and I was able to use up a lot of supplies. And so um, I, I did enjoy the process of making this one. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button as well as the bell notification button. I also have a link below to all the supplies I use as well as my email newsletter that goes out every couple weeks. So check that out if you're interested. I hope you have a fabulous day and as always, keep it creative.